that are uh, causing this turbulence and this confusion. Mr. Sister, 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 Hi, Lance Arif from CNBC. You know, you're the global CEO. You've come at a time of crisis to India. It would give us an idea of the kind of uh, ministers, the kind of people in the government that you might be engaging in. This is a new government that has talked about ease of doing business. How easy is it to do business in India post this fiasco? We have been in India for more than 100 years. We have been in India for more than 100 years. We are part of India. And uh, with the government, we are talking to the authorities, we are talking to uh, the, um, uh, the, the relevant authorities who are the food safety authorities. Uh, we, we, are, we may speak to uh, uh, ministers, but basically it is authorities that are managing and are uh, governing the quality of products that we are engaged with, and that is the prime uh, priority for us. Uh, doing business and, and again, doing business in India is, 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 is good because there uh, are the consumers, we have been for 100 years here, we have many products, they are beloved and trusted brands, and I don't think there is any problem there. You have mentioned words like anxiety, so what I'm trying to also get at is that Maggie accounts for 30% of your revenues here, while it might be your immediate priority to once again get the trust back of the consumers, uh, the rest of your plans, are you going to go ahead with them, are you, having any, are you rethinking anything at all about the country? Look, uh, I said, for Nestle, wherever Nestle is, our success also is linked with that trust relationship with consumers. The trust relationship with consumers on a specific product has been shaken. We feel because of a confusion, uh, not because of facts, to the product is safe. This is important to us. India is important to Nestle. And that's why I am here, to see where are we and to take the right decisions. That's why also, sitting here in front of you and talking, it is Nestle India has taken the decision to take the product for sale because of. I totally support that decision, and I can tell you, it is the first priority wherever, and wherever in Nestle worldwide, to do that. Sir, so, so one small question from here. Sir, this is Ashutosh from A&I, the, from from A &I, the very small question is, sir, uh, you say you are concerned about the consumers. You say you can, may I ask, that's a little bit difficult. So very small question. You said you were, you were concerned about the consumers. When the first state government in India, Uttar Pradesh, conducted a test and found this uh, more level of MSG and issued a warning to recall the entire package, do you regret not doing so as you claim that you are concerned about the uh, consumers? Wasn't that, uh, wasn't that a, a warning for you? So uh, the test which I think you, you wanted to imply that the UP government the, the, the MSG which they found, we do not add MSG as an additive in the product. What, what glutamic acid comes in the product is from the natural ingredients and that is why we started writing no added MSG so that the consumer doesn't get confused. As Mr. Bulke mentioned, now we realize that that is also creating confusion in the present circumstances. We are taking it off. There is, there is no requirement to declare anything if the glutamic acid is coming from natural ingredients. There is a question here, and I will, uh, excuse me, we also invited the written uh, questions, and I have a, a few of them here too. Let me give that now priority to, to honor the people who have followed the rules here. Uh, there was one that says, uh, is the industry is, are you, by doing this, are you, by doing this, uh, doing a, they call it a knee-jerk uh, reaction to the government? I, I'm sorry. What we do is only for the consumer in mind. What we do here is, and you can imagine, if you read the papers, what you write, we've, we've proved or not, but it's confusion. I don't feel this is the right environment to have a product on the shelf. That's the conclusion we have. We decide to take it off. To give us time also with the authorities to clarify this, I repeat. Until we have that clarification, we will not be there. I'm sure and confident that we're going to be back very soon. Uh, there's another question. We will come back to you afterwards. We come back to you. We come back to you. 
There are written questions, and I feel people have followed some rules. We have to privilege at least that question. So, um, Shivani, you, you have a question that you can answer. So, we have a question uh, from Mr. Miller oh for the Telegraph. Uh, he'd like to know about uh, where we produce Maggi noodles, how many factories we have, uh, are they our own factories, uh, where they are located and where we get our raw materials from. Uh, Maggi noodles are produced across the country. We have five different locations in which we produce Maggi. Uh, they are in Moga, Nanjangod, uh, Taliwal, Beechalim and Pantsnagar. Uh, at each of our factory locations, there are very stringent monitoring and quality checks that are done. Uh, there are hundreds of people who are committed to ensure that the products are safe and meet all our internal quality standards that are set. Sir, can I ask you please one question which I think really goes to the heart of the matter. I'm from the Financial Times. My name is Amy Kasman. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the permissible level of lead, that lead that has been found in the packets um, it's below the permissible level. And then there's a the question of whether they tested it only as a percentage of the spice and whether they tested it only as a percentage of the entire packet. My question is this, how does any lead get in a packet of Maggi noodles? We are not food experts, you are. Could you please explain to us how any lead might be present in a package of the spice of Maggi noodles and where this would originate from and what steps you need to take as a company or any company needs to take to ensure that this isn't above the permissible limit. Thank you. I understand your question. And I, I share the same worry. That's why we test on it. Because there is lead, lead and spores of lead. Lead in general is omnipresent. It's omnipresent in vegetables and in the environment you live in. Spores of lead. And as we have products, and as we do tests, and actually uh, the Maggi noodles are tested on something like 150 uh, uh, ingredients or spores uh, to see that they don't go beyond. And that's why the regulations have set a limit that they consider really safe for uh, 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 the human being. These limits are set, and actually if I see, if I see and share with you that we have in all these 1,600 and so many tests that we have done, that our limits of lead are something like an average 100 times under that limit, and go because there's some variation to something like 10 times lower than the limit, that is a limit that is already very safe. Uh, that is what gives me the confidence to say what I say. Your question is for global, lead and society, lead and society. But I. Yeah, but the limits that I have said is a minimum. These are two levels of spores, and that is omnipresent, always be. Yes. Pajuri Sen, CNN, IBN. If you could tell us two things. One is, uh, are you planning to withdraw the product from any other countries? We believe Nepal has already banned it. The UK is looking into it. Uh, the other question is, do you feel the perception is going to affect your other products in this country? This is a product. This is a problem. Confusion led specifically on Maggi noodles. That's why it is there uh, on Maggi noodles, so I don't think this is a problem global. Um, secondly, um, we're not going to take from the shelf in UK, etc., because our fundamental premise here is that we are very firm and confident in the quality of and safety of these products. This is Shweta Rajpal Kohli from NDTV. I'd like you to elaborate on